about something? Are you lactating? <laughs> <laughs> you want to share? Um, so yeah, and, and I, I didn't tell anybody mm-hmm. while I was down there until the very end. Because once I knew I was making it through training, you know, I'm going to start telling someone here or there. But, you know, I, I was determined to make it through training, and I did. So once I came out of training, I you know, got to base, and equals like, so when do you want to, you know, come out? We'll put you in touch with HR. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give you everything you need. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not comfortable yet. Because I want to come out when when I'm comfortable. I don't want to come out just to come out. Right. So I don't want to like come out and then transition to a new uniform and like looking like you know. Kyle. He wasn't ready. Right. So I I waited a little bit. I I think I still came out a little mm-hmm. little earlier than I would have liked. Mm-hmm. But it got it, you know it was a point where it's like you know I've I'd been on hormones for over six months at that point. Okay. And you came out earlier because because my sister had asked me, you know, what do you want for your for your birthday? This mm-hmm. was back in May. And I said, all I want for my birthday is to come out. So I did. Okay. I came out my birthday. Were you, and you was with United already. I was with United. I remember I wrote up my whole post and everything for Facebook about coming out, mm-hmm. and I was on the shuttle on my way to Laguardia. At like four o'clock in the morning, I posted it before I got on the plane. I put it in airplane mode, put it in my pocket. I was like, okay, I'm not looking at that. And I think I I'd, I'd put it on the, the flight attendant page, um, you know, GG. Okay. I, I'd put it on there, and that's where like a lot of people had seen it because yeah, okay. And and that wasn't like an attention grabbing thing. It was okay. It was a release for you. It was a release, but also like, hey, there's a bunch of people in base who I'd been flying with, and all of a sudden they're probably going to see something that's a little different, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, then it's like I, I didn't necessarily look like how I did mm-hmm. eight months before then, you know, jacked up and everything, but people had seen the Kyle that was presented mm-hmm. to them, you know, longer hair, super smooth skin, mm-hmm. you know, chiseled eyebrows and everything, you know, looking like a, you know, a real femboy, right. um, but... You know, I just, that was my way of, you know, coming out to the work group. Okay. And, and that one just kind of like blew up and that's where, that's where it started. That's where my storytelling started. So I came out and it just, it went flawlessly. I, I had support from, you know, just about everybody in my life except for my dad and his mom. You, at this point, you're living closer to because you were based in Jersey. Yeah, I was. I was based in Jersey. But Dad still wasn't having any part of it. Yeah, and physically, I hadn't even talked to my dad for about a month and a half before I even came out. You know, that was back in April, and you know, my sister basically was like telling my mom, you know, I I went home, you know, because I was moving down here to Jersey, mm-hmm. and you know. I only took some stuff with me. She's like, what about all your clothes? And like, get rid of it. Like, you can't get rid of all the clothes. And my sister had to like sit down with her and say, no, it's So it's they time. haven't seen you. They hadn't seen you then. Um, no, I would seen my mom and everything. Right. Like, no, this is before I, I'd come out. Uh-huh. Um, about a month and a half before then. And my sister was like, no, you know. He doesn't need it. Kyle's, Kyle's coming out. Right. Like, you need to learn to accept it. Mm-hmm. And to love her mm-hmm. and just give her support. So my mom kind of just backed off and realized that she couldn't be in mommy mode anymore where she was trying to be protective. Because mm-hmm. really that's, that's why she kind of held back so much is because she was scared. She was scared for me. She was scared of the world and she was scared of what that looks like for you. What that looks like for me, but also like my own, my dad's reactions, mm-hmm. you know? That's what she was really scared of. So I told her on, on the 16th, I said, I'm coming out tomorrow. So I'm not calling anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm not making it a fanfare or anything because I was just separating myself. If I needed to like, you know, get away from my entire family for a year and not talk to anybody, I was going to because I didn't want family to hold me back anymore. So my mom... You know, she owned up to it 
and she started making phone calls. You know, everybody that she hadn't told over the years, she said, this has been going on. This is, this is this an actual is thing. We are. Uh-huh. Good for her. You know, she, she only got, you know, negative backlash from one person, which was my dad's mom. And, uh-huh. you know, I was an abomination to Christ and everything of the sort. Uh, she's well, very religious, which I respect religion. I believe in faith. I feel like we should uh, have faith in a higher power, but we shouldn't use that faith to discriminate. That there's, was well said. There's no place for, for hate. And when someone uses faith and you know uh, an almighty power as an excuse to present bias... That's uncalled for in my book. So I didn't even talk to her since well before then anyways because I don't really care for the woman. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, Mana. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Marianne. Um, <laughs> so I could I could care less. How are you now with your dad? I still haven't talked to him. You know, um, my mom said, you know, I'm... I'm not going to, like, bite the kid or anything, but, you know, I don't want him here in the house. I said, good, I don't need to be there. Okay. And you, and life goes on. And and you know what? It, he's one of the two people that has an actual issue with me coming out and transitioning and fails to see that his son was actually his daughter this entire time. That's his problem. I think... And I, I realized very quickly that I shouldn't, spend my time dwelling on it and mm-hmm. making it mine because it I did have I did have so many people in my life that were going to support me mm-hmm. and give me the love and everything I needed your dad in my opinion I think as so many it, it's it's foreign to him and it's something he doesn't understand and age a lot sometimes has a lot to do with that and his upbringing and so I'm I'm in no way speaking for him, but I know other people that that they, they they don't they how do I put it? We can't penalize them for what they don't know and they don't understand. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is we, we you can try to open up, and if and if that's the thing, if they're not willing to open up to try to learn, then there's nothing else you can do. Absolutely, it's something he may not understand, and. For a man to have a male child and that child says, I'm female, it, it would be a hard pill to swallow because they don't understand it. Mm-hmm. But that is not your job. You can say, I want to teach you. I want to under- help you understand. But if that wall is up saying, I'm not accepting this, then your job is done. And. And he, you know, can't use the excuse that he didn't see it coming. Right. You know, I, I tried to come out quite a few times mm-hmm. over the years. And, and even now, you know, I don't speak to him directly, but I'll ask my sister, like, does he ask about me? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what does he say? Because something in here still wants it. Yeah. You know, part of me still wants dad's love. Yeah. But I don't know if that'll ever come back. And my sister says, you know, she tries to educate him, mm-hmm. you know, corrects him. And Is it's there just, pamphlets, something that she can just start leaving around? That if he sees it? She she probably could. I tried that mm-hmm. when I was younger. Because you know. I don't Res- think... Resources that, that mm-hmm. have been given to me by, um, you know, like the nurses and mm-hmm. stuff. Back the in literature packets they have. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I watch too many movies and this is this might work. But in my mind, I'm thinking... Trying to talk a one-on-one may not be accepting, but if something's on the counter and no one's around when it's on the counter, mm-hmm. maybe you'll pick it up and go read it. Or maybe he's secretly trying to find out or educate himself. And maybe one day, maybe, I, I, I want to get to know you better and understand, mm-hmm. you know? Maybe and, that day will come. May, you, you can never say never. And we, we're all at a point where we all can learn. So I wouldn't say give up hope. I wouldn't say stop living, waiting for it. But don't, don't just say it'll never happen because you never know what can happen. Um, I wanted you to, I know we touched on it, but I wanted you to walk me through 
Um, in part of your story, I read too, the dealing with TSA, the dealing with the name change and people that were in your class or people that knew you as Kyle and they see you now. How does that work and how does that make you feel? You can enlighten me on what's that like when people see you that knew you. Well, let me say this. No one can see Kyle and then see Kylie. I'm sure p people may have even walked past you not recognizing you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, it's happened. Um, so with like TSA and everything early on, um, before I had gotten all my IDs changed and everything mm -hmm. um, carried over, you know, um, with, with the way that known crew member and getting through security as a crew member, mm -hmm. you know, all of your documents have to be in line mm -hmm. before the company changes your name over completely. Okay. So up until January of this year, mm -hmm. I was still flying with all of my documents that said Kyle. You know, I, I my name legally changed in September of last year. Mm -hmm. um, I got my new license. I got my new passport. I got my birth certificate changed. So as far as the state of Vermont is concerned, I was born female as Kaylee Grace Scott. On May they 17, changed your birth certificate? My birth certificate has been amended. And it, it, I didn't know that was a thing. So it reflects my gender and my full name. D is there a part on the form that says you once were? No. So it's just as if Kyle didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. So I know you said your ID as of September 2019 mm -hmm. all said Ky Kaylee. Kaylee. All except my airman certificate. Okay. So HR needed my airman certificate with the FAA to be changed right. over. And that was the hardest thing to, to get done. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it was a long process. It took a while. So I'd be going through KCM some days, most days actually, and, you know, looking something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'd hand them an ID with me with a beard on it. And then they'd be like, I'm like, yeah. I go, oh, okay. And then sometimes they'd say, I need a supervisor. Mm -hmm. And then they call more people over and then more people over and more people over. And there'd be like seven or eight people. And you're going to work. I'm this going is the to start work. of your day. This is going through KCM. And they're all gawking at it and like, no, that's not, that's, not. I'm like, yeah, guys, it is. Can we like stop making a, you know, a festival out of it? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not some sideshow attraction, mm -hmm. you know, don't pay 25 cents to come and look at, you know, the trans girl standing in front of you and, oh, can't believe your eyes. How did that inside, how do you feel now, now pull that together and push it down like it didn't happen and get on a flight? The, the first time that that happened, I was like, oh, that's a little flattering. Mm -hmm. But then once it started becoming a trend, mm -hmm. I was like, this is getting really annoying. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hurtful. You know, I'm, I'm all for bringing awareness and educating, but I don't want to be some, you know, sideshow piece. Right. But with the understanding of what our industry is mm -hmm. and people trying to get through TSA. So I can, I can understand a portion of it as, especially if that person is the first time they're seeing you mm -hmm. and like, now what do I do? Right. That's, that's one thing, you know, if you call over a supervisor and like, I've, they're like, hey, I haven't mm -hmm. done anything like this before. I'm like, okay, cool. Most of the time I'm tell them, you know, I'd flip over my crew badge and like match the names, mm -hmm. you know, because back at the crew badge is your legal right, name right. and then the front is your preferred name. Um, so I tell, they'd be looking at it and like back of the badge. Or I would think it. even simply, if a supervisor has encountered that mm -hmm. and you are Newark based, they have meetings every morning. So put it in your notes every morning at the mm -hmm. TSA meeting. We do have a few. Right. So just if you have it, please note or they can write your name down. Cause you know what? Newark, Newark wasn't, wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. Newark was fine. I love coming through Newark. You okay. know, I, I knew everybody. That's a part of why a major part of why I wanted to sit down with you because just as with your story, and, and, and thousands other.
including race, mm -hmm. including race and what we deal with, especially right now in the height of it, of what we are dealing with. If people can just see people for people and accept them for who they are, period, point blank, end of story. Absolutely. And that's, and, that's, that's the way that it should be. It there, would fix so much stuff. If, if the world could just learn to love and if you gender, don't have to gender, like me. gender equality and, you know, a, you know, just basic human rights weren't controversial. Mm -hmm. We'd be in a much better place. Just let people love. I think so many and people... At, are at, at, at the end of the day, love will always win. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's That's it. there's, there's no arguing it. Love no. will always win. Let people be. Let them live. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, as the saying goes, what I eat don't make you shit. <laughs> Put it for him. I didn't put it as eloquent <laughs> as you, but that's what it boils down to. Yeah. What I'm doing over here, if this ain't what you into, this is not what you're into. But you don't have to be mean to me. You don't have to be hateful to me and degrading to me. Just show me respect because I'm going to show you the same respect you show me. And that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying embrace who I am. You... You may have your standoffs because you may have never dealt with a black person in your community or where you grew up or how your family raised you. Or you just, and, and then you judge it based on what you see on TV, right? Do you know me? And, and it's the same. It's equality. Absolutely. This is what makes you feel great and look great. And this is what's making you happy. Tell me, how would that affect me? that you're happy. I hope it radiates. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm allowing you to be who you are and I'm allowing you to be happy and allowing is the worst word, I'm accepting you as you are, I think that would make me more peaceful. Cause it, you know, I'm just talking to you as you, as the person, the lady, the, the person that's right in front that's of you. That's it. That's it. Anything beyond that, it doesn't, it doesn't move me one way or the other. And with that said, I want you anything that you want to add that I may have missed, but I will ask you this, a message of hope. There is a young boy, a young girl, a young person out there that feels like they're not seen, they're not loved, they're not heard and they feel alone, please share a message of hope and anything that I haven't addressed that you feel is important, please share. The story that I tell is one of conquer and change. It's that your time in the closet can be dark and scary, but it doesn't have to be. Come out, be counted. Be seen, be heard, and be loved. To the parents and friends and family out there, as Kimberly said, all that it affects you is making sure that your, your children and your loved ones are loved. Just that. Let them love, let them be. There's, there's just, there's, there's no other way to, to explain it. I, I hope that y'all can realize that, you know, people who might be gay or bi or trans or queer or, or pansexual or however, or whoever they identify as, you know, these are normal everyday people in your life. They're your friends or your family. They're your coworkers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, y'all, y'all see, you know, my pictures, you know, this bodybuilding guy that you would never expect to be the girl sitting in front of you today. We're normal everyday people in your everyday lives. And I promise you, you know, those who knew me, you know, two years ago, even, you know, when I was in flight attendant training, I'm the same person I am today. Mm -hmm. I just look a little different. It's a different package. The only thing that's, you know, really different about me is that I'm happy now. 
and that I'm not full of as much anxiety and pain Mm -hmm. and holding back from who I actually am. If anything, it's made me a better person, Mm -hmm. I think. And, and that's, that's just what it comes down to. Just let people be, let them be. Well said, well said. I want to thank everyone who has stood by Kaylee, who has supported Kaylee, and who has helped her along her journey. A special thank you to United Airlines for the inclusion that Kaylee needed to make this transition. And hopefully in the future, everyone can feel a part of the inclusion, all groups. Um, But a job well done, so thank you. I wanna first end with thanking you because you taught me a lot and it's messages that I can share. Um, When I don't understand things, to not judge, but to ask a question and understand better. I, I, I really did learn a lot today, so thank you. Of course. Um, My goal is to educate and- You did. To you know, bring the realness of someone mm-hmm. being trans to light. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, thank you to United. United Airlines played an instrumental role mm-hmm. in, in my transition with, without their, you know, the impact that they put on to my life, there there would be no Kaylee today. You know, I thank United, and while I hate the struggles that Kyle went through, you know, because of those struggles, Kaylee lives today. And that's it's, it's, it's weird putting it together like they're two different people. I'm I'm the same person, person. but to me, it it almost it almost feels like two different people because that's not that scared lost boy anymore. For those of you who don't understand and who think this is odd or what, I don't get it. It's okay to not get it. The problem lies when you don't want to be educated and you don't want to learn and you don't want to try to understand somebody that is a little different than you. So please take the time to really watch this and listen to what's being taught and said and shared and open up your minds and your hearts just a little bit, just a little bit to soften yourself so that you can understand things just a little bit better. This is Kimberly Nichols with Something's Coming Up and I thank you for sitting, standing, driving, watching and listening to this. Please share, like, subscribe. Something's Coming Up on Facebook, on YouTube, and official Something's Coming Up on Instagram. Thanks for being with us. Share, like, and follow. Thank you. Thank you, Kylie. Kaylee. <laughs> no, stop. How did I get all the way through it? Okay, wait. And I just want to say again, thank you so much, Kaylee. This means a lot. Thanks thank for you. having me here. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I could tell my story.